In this video, I'm going to walk through the EfficientNet version 2 paper, which is accepted in ICML 2021. What excites me about this paper is that it is a follow-on paper for the state-of-the-art EfficientNet paper, which has been a very successful classification model for quite some time. So this paper introduces training aware neural architecture search that not just optimizes for parameters, but also for the training speed. They also introduce what is called progressive training, which works pretty well with adjusted regularization. And lastly, they benchmark the proposed epi efficient net version two with other methods and show really good performance improvements. So let's dive deeper and see how all these ideas are used to improve efficient net architecture. Knowing EfficientNet version 1 really helps to understand version 2. So let's start with a recap of EfficientNet version 1. EfficientNet systematically studies model scaling. When we think of model scaling, we can scale a deep network three ways. We can increase the width or the depth by increasing the number of layers or the resolution of the input to learn fine-grained features of the input. The most important thing to note is that we don't change the layer architecture in scaling, but just the width, depth or resolution. While scaling each of width, depth or resolution helps, there should be a clever way to scale all of them together to make the most of scaling. In other words, there should be a balance in scaling. So EfficientNet version 1 proposes a compound scaling method where we combine all the three ways of scaling. In order for the scaling to be applied, we first need an initial architecture to start with. We can start with a well-established architecture like say ResNet, but the authors propose to use neural architecture search and inspired by MNAS Net, they choose to use mobile inverted bottleneck convolution layers instead of simple convolution layers. They additionally include squeeze and excite blocks which was one of the successful architectures that won the ImageNet classification challenge in 2017. Now with this architecture, we now need to figure out what are the best scales, alpha, beta, and gamma are for depth, width, and resolution. As we are going to scale all these together, we need a compound scaling factor phi. Now the training itself takes place in two stages. In stage one, we fix phi to one and calculate the best value for alpha, beta, and gamma using grid search. The, res the result of this search gives the best values, which seems to be 1.2, 1.1, and 1.15. The model that we arrive at in this step is the efficient net B0 model. After this step, we can proceed with increasing the compound scaling co coefficient phi to arrive at bigger models. So the result of step one is the efficient net B0 model. And with scaling, we obtain efficient net B1 to B7. One of the main drawbacks of training with large images is that as the image size increases, training becomes terribly slow. In order to accommodate large images on the GPU, we need to decrease the batch size. But as we all know, batch snorm doesn't like small batches, training becomes suboptimal with small batches, etc, etc. So the other problem with efficient at version 1 is that it has depth-wise convolutions. And depth-wise convolutions are usually slow. So it'll be nice to get rid of the depth-wise convolutions in the network. So they chose to use fused MVCon instead of simple MVCon. In fused MVCon, the depth-wise convolution is fused with the one by one con layer before it. The third and major limitation of efficient net v1 is that compound scaling scales depth, width and resolution equally. If we double the depth, then we also end up doubling the width and resolution. Plus, the doubling happens at all stages or the blocks of the network. With all that said, let's find out how efficient net version 2 addresses all these drawbacks. The first contribution of version 2 is that they have introduced a training aware architecture search. What we really want is of course better accuracy that trains in less time and results in a network with less parameters. 
If we were to express it mathematically, we need to optimize the product of these three metrics, A, S and P. So the architecture search should choose the best combination of MBCon, MBFusedCon, number of layers, kernel size and expansion ratio. So they sampled 1000 models with different parameters and trained for 10 epochs and choose the top ones, ignoring the rest. We can see the result of the search in the table on my right. So one thing to note is that the early stages where the computation is heavy, the search has somehow picked up fused conf layers and at later stage, it has used mbconf which is computationally expensive. Additionally, whenever it uses mbconf, the kernel size seems to be three by three, but then the number of layers or the depth seems to increase too in order to compensate for the lost receptive field with 3x3conf. This architecture is the small version of EfficientNet version 2. And lastly, like most recent papers, they propose the medium and large size network by adding more layers in stage 5 and 6, which seems to perform better. Now we do all this to improve the training speed so this graph shows a direct comparison of the training times of different models against the efficient net version 2. We can straight away notice that the time it takes for the proposed version 2 model is significantly less than the time taken by the version 1 model to achieve the same accuracy. And the next contribution of the paper is progressive learning. The idea is fairly simple and straightforward and motivated by previous work such as progressive growing of GANs and mix and match papers. However, the main finding is that we should adjust the regularization whenever we change the image size so that we don't compromise on the accuracy. They argue that heavy regularization is needed for large images when compared to small images. So, they increase the regularization along with the image size as training progresses. Practically, they divide the training into stages and for each stage, they pick an image size and regularization and train with those. For simplicity, they just use three regularizations which are dropout, rand augment and mix up. The training setup for efficient net is interesting because unlike standard models, we need to do an architecture search. For this, they split 2% of the training data into what they call a mini val and use it for architecture search. In terms of optimization, LR scheduler, etc., they mostly follow the efficient net version 1 setting. For the augmentation, they mostly do rand augment, mix up, dropout, and stochastic depth with a probability of 0.8. Finally, because they do progressive training, they split the training into four stages based on the number of epochs, with each stage composed of about 87 epochs. And as the training progresses, they increase the augmentation parameters from these min valves to max valves. Also, for large networks, they do heavy augmentation to prevent overfitting. This is an extensive comparison of efficient net version 2 against all the state of the art. If we look at these two lines, that gives a direct comparison of the efficient net B7 model versus the proposed efficient net V2 medium size model. We can see that the accuracy is not only better, but the training time is significantly less. Another thing they mention is that the efficient net version 2 performs better than the Vision Transformer. Vision Transformer has been quite promising in the recent past as models that could potentially replace convolutional networks. In a separate graph, they also show that gaining training time comes with better inference times too, with the efficient net version 2 having much lesser latency compared to state-of-the-art models. Just to show that the model works on other datasets too, they transfer learn on the model on CIFR, Oxford Flowers, CARS uh, dataset. 
On each of these datasets, we can notice state-of-the-art performance of EfficientNet version 2. Now, thank you very much for your attention and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video.